Detours, brought to you by Sports and Spokes, the magazine for wheelchair sports and recreation. In 2009, while serving with the Danish Army in Afghanistan, Mark Peters' life changed forever when he stepped on an IED landmine. Little did he know that having his legs amputated would lead him to the sport he loves, wheelchair rugby. Just three years ago, the Danes finished seventh out of eight teams that qualified for the Tokyo Paralympics. But coming into Paris, Peters and his teammates have their sights set much higher. Well, I'm a 3.5, so I'm a primary ball holder, ball carrier. Um, I'm a, the guy who's in the lead uh, most of the time, like an, uh, captain, uh, captain on the court, uh, making sure that uh, just uh, communicate people to go where I want them to go. So that's pr primary role what I, what I do. As a 3-5, you have a lot of responsibility when you're out on the floor because you're actually sucking up a lot of points out there. So do you feel an extra responsibility? Is, is there more weighing on your shoulders? Um, actually, no. Uh, it's, you know, you, you take a lot of points off, off the court, but just that's how, just, just how the game is. You know that you, are, uh, you have more function than the other guys. Uh, of course, you need to compute, contribute, contribute more because you have so high function, but it's not pushed any more pressure on me, I think. The Danish team finally made it to the Paralympics and, and you were on that squad. Uh, you finished seventh out of eight teams, but still, nonetheless, that had to be a pretty proud moment to get your country into the Paralympics. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a huge moment, a huge moment. Um, we were just this short in 16, uh, going from to going to Rio, and um, we just after that we just uh, we just talking about how we're gonna get to Tokyo. Uh, that was we, what we were training for the last four years, and when we finally did it in in uh, 19, it was just uh, like you felt like the world just opened up for us, like a whole new uh, stage for us. So it was a big relief, but also um, a huge accomplishment for us. You've seen many styles of play from country to country. Are there any differences between the European style of play and the American style of play? Yeah, there's a big difference between the U.S. and the European rugby. There's a lot of difference. Um, first of all, the mentality. The mentality is a uh, completely different between the uh, Europeans uh, and the U.S. rugby. Also, Europeans go from international rules. U.S. has their own rules here. So there's a little bit of difference. Um, it's more uh, a mentality thing, how they play here and how we play in uh, Europe. Uh, so, from from that standpoint of mentality, like, what is it that what are what are the differences? Uh, more tough, more tough, uh, and also uh, there are many more experienced players over here. So you don't meet teams who are a, a walkover as much as doing Europe. Uh, we have good, uh, we have some pretty good teams in Europe, but over here there is a lot more. Uh, a lot more teams here who can compete on the higher level. So you'll meet uh, pretty good teams over here all the time. So the expectation from uh, Team USA from everything I've heard is to use finesse and speed. So would you say then your tactic in, in as, uh, you know, a, a team in Europe, are you guys just harder hitting? Uh, I am. I mean, uh, it, you know, even beyond harder hitting, is it about containment, trying to keep the score down? Of course, uh, but um, each team has its uh, has its style of play. My style of play is hard hitting and uh, going all out. Um, finesse is not my style, um, but some teams has more t uh, more tactics and technique and finesse. Mine is uh, just hitting hard. Nice. All right. In the time you've been playing, which is basically about a decade now. Name some of the great players or the greatest players you've seen play this game. Oh, that's a lot. Well, first of all, Chucky Ogie from U.S., phenomenal player. Uh, I'm also Zach Mandel from Canada. Those are very, very talented players, of course. Chris Bond, Riley Bat from uh, Australia. Then uh, the guys from Japan, I can't pronounce their names. <laughs> and also uh, Jim Roberts, Stu, Stu Roberts. Uh, Stu from uh, GP and uh, also Jonathan Hibbenat and Sebastian from France. I seem to hear, you know, Chuck's name over and over again. Not that not that that's a great, you know, unknown. I mean, Chuck, Chuck's been around the block a few times, many Paralympic teams. But what is it about his style of play that makes him so threatening? He is f***ing smart. He is so smart. He knows he is fast, hard hitting, but he also 
incredibly smart. So you can't you can't get around him without without using uh, very very uh, using all your power to get through him. So um, he's very tough and he's smart as hell, and he knows how to play tactical, finesse, and hard. As we know, in any sport, people try and always get any kind of advantage they possibly can. You know, in football, we see people grabbing jerseys just to get that extra second here and there. Yeah. Some of the what? What are some of the dirty plays, or you know, the, the maybe not even dirty plays, but those little, you know, pushing the boundaries. Yeah. What What are some of those plays you see out there on the court? Well, internationally, I don't you don't see that that much, but sometimes in club teams, you see people grabbing wheels, uh, grabbing hands, and always pushing the limit a little bit uh, some would say it's just it's just how you push the sport but I'm more like uh, what you call it sportsmanship grabbing wheels is not my style but that is something that happens some uh, but some of the people who does that pretty quickly gets tossed aside because the ref is getting so good at spotting all the dirty little things that they see it immediately and it, and it, and it creates um uh, bad environment on teams, I think. I'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Sports and Spokes Magazine, the magazine for wheelchair sports and recreation. For over 50 years, Sports and Spokes has been a leader in covering adaptive sports worldwide. To catch up on all the latest news and read about your favorite sports and athletes, go to www.sportsandspokes.com. Biggest rivalries you've noticed internationally? Oh, I think U.S. Canada is probably a big rivalry. Uh, Denmark, Sweden has always, it doesn't matter what kind of sport, Denmark, Sweden has a big rivalry, it doesn't matter which sport it is. And of course, I think uh, Australia, U.S. also is a big rivalry. They always meet in the finals and uh, battling out. So, what? Well, what's the problem between you and Denmark and Sweden? You know, Denmark and Sweden. Oh, our feud go way back, way back to back in the Vikings age. Denmark has conquered Sweden, Sweden have conquered Denmark, and has always been a rivalry. Doesn't matter what. If there is, is football, handball, tennis, it doesn't matter. If the guys are Danes and are Swede, it's a rivalry. Expectations going into Paris. Oh, well, we wanna we wanna go for medals. That's of course our big dreams go for a medal. Um, if we can do that, that will be a huge compliment uh, from uh compliment. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, for us. Uh, but of course, we have to go through uh, so many great teams, so it's going to be hard, but we're training hard to hopefully can do that. Who are some of the stars on your team? Uh, I would say Sebastian Fredersen uh, is our biggest star. Then we have Leon Jorgensen, who's our captain. Then maybe me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a joker outside. We have a, we have a pretty good uh, rugby program in our country. We're doing everything we can to um, Make sure that we can uh, recruit and uh, develop players. Um, and uh, if you have a good program, you can develop players all the time, so you can keep switching out people. Do you feel like uh, Denmark is embracing adaptive sports? Oh yeah, a lot more than they used to. Like uh, when we had uh, when we qualified in uh, in nineteen, uh, we were told that we were told that people were standing in line to uh, go in and pay pay money to see us play. Usually it's like, are you coming for free? But now they wanted to pay to come in and see us, which was a huge difference. And there was a huge crowd. Uh, and we were like, this is completely new, new for us. Having a big crowd uh, cheering for us. When we went to Worlds in 22, there were like 1,500 people paying to see us play rugby, which also was a huge thing. And um, Danish television started transmitting all the games. So. That was also huge. And they're going to do the same thing at the Paralympics now. They didn't used to, but now they are they are showing on one of one or two channels and also having our own channel. So it only shows Paralympic sports. So that's a huge, huge uh, thing in Denmark now.